What's going on, everyone? Welcome on into a live edition of Falcons Today. We're going to run through the latest news and rumors surrounding your Atlanta Falcons from signing Russell Wilson to trading for this guy for free agency buzz. Then we're going to get into a mock draft roundup. A lot of the big publications have put out mock drafts after the NFL Combine. So what I did was I put them all together and we broke down each selection. And then finally, we've got a mailbag on today's show. But first things first, this is not Matthew Sports. It is Chat Sports. So I want to get you guys involved in the show. Shout out your city for me in the chat right now. Let me know where you are tuning in. We call this the build-up stage because we know not everyone is on time. I'm a punctual person. Jack, are you generally... I think you're a very punctual person, right? Where, like, if someone says, hey, be here at 3 o'clock, I'm there at 245 kind of guy. Oh, yeah. I live by the mantra that if you're early, you're on time. Yeah. If, if you're, you're on time, on you're, time late. you're late. Exactly. Yeah. And so, because you need time to be prepared for whatever situation you're in. You survey the area, indeed. you get prepared. Some of us did not have that type of freshman football coach where it was practice starts at 3.30. If you're not here at 3.15, you're already late. But I know not everyone runs the same way. So while we let the latecomers get in here, let's see where everyone's watching. But Wyatt is in Madison, Wisconsin. Wyatt, please have some cheese curds and a very nice local beer for me, maybe a spotted cow. Um, how about we've got Nebraska in the house. I've got Rome, Georgia. I've got Canton, Georgia in the house here. Ty Man, the Buckeye, is watching from OHIO. Um... Let's see. I've got Bend, Oregon from Chris. That you, you know why Bend, Oregon's a famous town, Jack? It is the home of the final Blockbuster store. Yeah, I remember that documentary. Um, I don't know if it's still open. I don't think it is anymore. Columbia, South Carolina, Bryant, Atlanta, Seattle, Carson City, Nevada, New York from Roman, Norfolk, England. We've got a super chat rolling in and the first one ever on the channel. Let's go. This one's rolling in from Channel 404. Hey, Matthew, huge fan of yours, my guy. Glad I get to see you live. Channel, appreciate you super chatting. Thank you for supporting the show. It's always good to have big fans in the chat right now, so thank you so much. And rise up, buddy. Thank you so much for supporting the channel like that. And good to see you, too. I didn't know I had that big of a fan. But appreciate you, Channel. Um... If you want to get on screen like my new friend, Channel 404, you can Super Chat, and we guarantee it gets on screen for everyone to see. Now, first time Super Chatter, what's that? That actually reminds us, or reminds me at least, of our Super Chat deal today. Jack, let's tell them all about it. Any Super Chat, including the one we just got from Mr. Channel, no matter the amount, will get you entered into a Michael Vick autographed mini helmet raffle. We're going to do that at the end of the month. So we're going to let the entire month of March kind of build up to it. We did this last month for a jersey. This time I got my hands on one of those like mini helmets, not the full-size ones they wear, but the ones that you can put on your desk without looking like you're a former player. So any Super Chat, but this is only for today. Moving forward, it's a $10 entry. But for today only, for the first day of the month, kudos to you guys for being here bright and early. No matter the amount, we'll get you entered. So have at it. Established TV, what's going on? Can we help you guys? Oh, sure thing, yeah. We got some uh, training going on on the fly here. I'm the guinea pig. Established TV, I say Russ over Kirk any day, but still draft Penix Jr., but Justin should be finer, uh, should be the finer at option. So here's my thing on Michael Penix. I love him. I think he was awesome last year, and I don't really understand why we do this as a society where we just let the length of the NFL offseason make us forget how good quarterbacks were in college. I feel like Lamar was a major victim of this, where time went on, and because we had so much time on our hands, we killed that time by coming up with dumb reasons to build up QBs and tear down QBs. I'm not forgetting that Michael Penix was must-see TV last year in college football. So no matter what Atlanta does at quarterback, trade for Justin Fields, sign Kirk Cousins, sign Russell Wilson. If they've got a second-round pick and they are in love with Michael Penix Jr., let's go for it. 
because you're not signing Russ to a long-term deal. You don't have Kirk Cousins for the next five, six, seven years. The guy's turning 36 in August. Justin Fields is somewhat of a rental-ish, like a, you know, a trial for a year or two. I don't see the issue with going QB in round two, no matter what you do during free agency to satisfy that need. Established TV, thank you so much for the super chat. Ty Dalla, $5 super chat. You're in, buddy. Good luck for the raffle at the end of the month. It's not the end of the show, the end of the month. Channel 404 with another super chat. Let's go, man. Say that and tell me that the perfect offseason wouldn't be trading up for Drake May and getting Daniil Hunter. I like to get Daniil Hunter part. And this is somewhat of a foreshadow for what I'm going to say later on in the live show. Listen, trading up for Drake May sounds awesome. Sounds cool. Something I'm on board with. But what have I said for two months now? Everyone, on three. One, two, three. It takes two to trade. you got to find someone to trade with. I don't think the Bears are moving anywhere. They're going Caleb Williams. The Commanders are going quarterback. I think the Patriots are staying put, and I think they're going QB. Now, if the Patriots decide to trade out, or if they just go Marvin Harrison Jr., all of a sudden the Cardinals at pick number four are going to be the hottest team in the NFL as teams will try and trade up and get whatever QB slipped out of the top three. But I just don't think that's going to happen. So I would not get your heart set on it. Channel 404, thank you so much for the Super Chat, my man. Salute to you. Atlanta Dog 88 what's going on, dude? Just give me a QB who can win games. I don't care who. I, I, I think that's a pretty good strategy. I like winning games, too. I think there is some conversation to be had about which QB will do that more than others, and that's sort of what we're doing here today. But, hey, yeah, I think we're all on board. Winning games is a lot more fun than losing games. Uh, it's Taylor Elwell, longtime viewer of the channel. I just want a new QB. What do you guys think Desmond Ritter's doing right now? Like, Taylor Heineke knows he's getting released. Ritter's in a spot where I don't think you should nor would release him because I think he's a very valuable backup QB. Like, I think what we saw last year was, hey, Desmond Ritter does have a lot of pros. I do think he belongs in the, in the National Football League. I do think he's a top 64 quarterback on this planet in 2024. But it's not a top 32. It's not a starting guy. So is he just hanging out at like Taco Mac and like trying to avoid all these mock drafts and whatnot? I wonder what he's up to. Would love to know. All right. Speaking of Russell Wilson, this is going to take up a good chunk of the beginning portion of our show. So I want to get your opinion right now. Do you want to sign Russell Wilson? Yes or no? There's obviously some pros and cons to be weighed. I don't think Russell Wilson is as bad as maybe advertised after a bad two-year stint in Denver. But I definitely don't think signing Russell Wilson is going to rejuvenate this team and get them back in the playoffs for sure. We've got some pros and cons to weigh through here. But first, just right off the bat, do you want to sign Russ? The live poll is this question. The no's have it, but it's somewhat close. I mean, maybe not too. 63%. You know, almost two-thirds of you guys are saying no. I don't want to sign Russell Wilson as a plan A or even plan B. Or to be honest with you, even a plan C. I don't think it would be a disaster. I don't think it could be such a horrible move that sets Atlanta back because it's just not going to cost you much money. The only thing you risk losing is time. Right? If you sign Kirk Cousins to a monster deal and he's bad, you've lost time and you've lost money. You're not losing money. You're not losing draft capital for him. The only thing you're doing is wasting time. And that's a very valuable thing, and arguably the most valuable thing. But at least it doesn't come at a cost of the other two, other two things, which would then set you back in more time down the road. Right? If you sign Kirk Cousins to a monster deal and he sucks, well, you have less money to spend the next offseason. Whereas Russell, Russell Wilson, if he sucks... You're right back where you were right now in 2025. Another super chat from Channel 404. Feeling generous today, bro. So no May, but maybe Justin Fields. Somehow get a number one pass rusher and another receiver. Also, please don't forget my three entries. Don't worry. YouTube keeps track of all the super chats. So when I just finish the live show, 
I go back to my desk and I just write down all the names in an Excel sheet. So I never lose track. Don't worry. Um, Channel 404, though, appreciate your super chat yet again. As for uh, Justin Fields, I'm on board. I think if the NFL offseason was a lot shorter, Justin Fields would have been traded. But because we have time on our hands, people get bored and people build up guys and tear down guys because they need to get clips. And I'm partially guilty of it, too. Like, I'm putting content out right now, so I'm not uh, immune to this, but I, I like Justin Fields still. As for the pass rusher and receiver part, yes and yes. I feel like Atlanta's going to go edge rusher in round one with Raheem Morris being a defensive guy, but I still think it can't hurt to load up. As for wide receiver, Gabe Davis, anyone? I'm gonna toss that out there. Only if you want it. Luke with a $2 super chat. I'm trying to get the ha that helmet. Also, rise up. Luke, best of luck to you. Appreciate you, and best of luck, like I said, in the helmet. We got a first-time super chatter rolling in from Ty, Rome, or Malik? Well, that's a big question. Um, I feel like I love them both so much. Roman, no, it's Ro not Roman Wilson. Uh, Jack's funny. He's a Michigan man. Uh, Roman Dunes, they were Malik neighbors. I'm going to go... Roma Dunze. It, I think it's Roma Dunze, but man, I think it is close. I, I do think it's one of those situations where we have seen some drafts with great, for example, what if Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase were in the same draft class? Like, yes is the right answer. You know what I mean? Like, you, sure, maybe one's a little bit ahead of the other, but man, if, if the consolation prize is Jamar Chase and that's Malik Neighbors, that's a pretty good consolation prize. I, I think they're that close, but I would go with Roma Dunze because at the collegiate level, he was able to make some great in-route adjustments to passes. Your NFL quarterback's going to be a lot more accurate than your college quarterback. If he's making those types of adjustments in college, imagine in the NFL when he's got, I mean, uh, Michael Penix was still a great quarterback for him, but I think he could be even that much more special. I got a runny nose all of a sudden. Cody Massey. Will the Patriots trade their pick? Cody, appreciate your super chat. First time super chatter. Um, I don't think they will. If I'm thinking through the lens of a first time head coach in Gerard Mayo, and this is a quarterback loaded class, and there are already fears of next year's class being a little bit underwhelming, and you're picking top three, and it's not your fault that you're picking top three, right? You inherited the top three selection. Now is the time to go get a quarterback. If you put it off and you suck again next year and it's not a good quarterback class, oh, Nelly, they may get him out after two or three seasons because you passed on one this year. I think they're staying put and they're waiting to see what sloppy seconds they can get from the commies. It's Rusty Moore, our winner from last week. Get rid of 36-year-old Matt Ryan in 2022 sit through two years of bum QB play only to sign another 36-year-old quarterback two years later? Did Terry ever have a plan at QB? Is there the uh, paper towels over there? I don't know why. I don't have, like, my nose started running. Um, thank you. And then mute me so I don't blow out everyone's eardrums too. Take two. Uh, I'm back. Did Terry ever have a plan at quarterback as I probably just plummeted our viewership with my nose blowing? It's a great question. I, I, I'm inclined to say no. Like I, I think this is a question that requires you to be in Flowery Branch to truly know what went on behind the scenes. I will add in Terry's defense, he didn't have a lot of great avenues to improve at the quarterback position. Right, Move on from Matt Ryan. You take on a major dead cap hit. That's not a year to go spend big in free agency at QB. Plus, when are there ever good quarterbacks in free agency? Think about the last 15 years. The best quarterback to truly hit the market, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, and Kirk Cousins, doesn't happen very often. Um, as for the draft, I mean, yeah, he took Desmond Ritter. Who'd you want to take? Malik Willis? Matt Corral? Like, there, weren't, there weren't better options. So I feel a little bit bad for Terry, and then, Last year, go at Bijan at eight. I just don't know if there was a true path to upgrading. The Lamar one will haunt you if you really decided no. Like, he's not good. 
That one's going to come back to bite you in the butt. All right, we have some more Super Chats. Let's run through these really quickly, and then we're going to get into the nuts and bolts. Atlanta Dog, we need to check Rusty Moore's duck for PEDs this time. The duck website is PED free. I can guarantee you that much. Um, I'm looking forward to the next duck race in four weeks or so. Anthony Davis, the one and only, the Unibrow. Justin Fields for a second round pick or J.J. McCarthy in the second round? This is a great question for our mailbag later on. I'll give you a more in-depth answer during it, but I'm going to go with Justin Fields. I like Justin Fields a lot. That is no secret on this channel. And if he comes to Atlanta and he sucks, I probably have to resign. That, that, that feels appropriate. That probably feels like my only out. Is just, I don't know if I'll resign because I actually wouldn't resign. You know, what's the guy of, uh, who's, who's the guy on the radio that said he was going to quit his job? Mad Dog, thank you. Um, I won't put myself in a position where I just lie to you guys. I'll have to put myself in some sort of punishment, though. I don't know what that is, but I will have to punish. Yeah. I also want to say, JJ's not going in the second round. Like, I don't know. Will Levis was supposed to be a first-round pick last year. I know, but, like, there's put that so, out there. I agree. I, I do so think it's a little bit. Spoke. I agree. I agree. I, I don't think JJ falls round two. I, I think if he does fall during the first round, then a team trades back into the end of round one to get him. To get that fifth-year option, that's very important versus a second-year versus a round two guy. The Big Shot Agenda with a super chat after sending a super thanks in earlier. Justin Fields for QB1 2024. You've got my vote, Big Shot. You've got my vote. Okay, are we ready to jump into the show? Coming up, latest news and rumors, mock draft roundup, and a mailbag. So all the super chats with questions. They're going to be included in that mailbag, just like the one we got from, who was it, Anthony Davis. So, any question you have, you want to guarantee on screen, super chat. Otherwise, hashtag Falcons in the live chat somewhere in your question, and producer Jack picks his favorite question. Okay, are we ready to jump into a show? We are not ready. We have 218 people hanging out with us at the moment. 37 likes. That's that fucking pitiful. Can we get to 50 likes? That's a, that's a nice round number. Yeah, 13 more likes, and then we're actually going to get this plane off the ground. Don't make me become the Spirit Airlines of YouTube channels with endless delays. I will not be that. We are Delta, baby. We are on time. Get us 12 more likes, and we are getting off the ground here. Three likes away. If you don't like the video, you fly Southwest, not out of price, but out of preference. That's the scariest thing in the world. Could you imagine like sitting down with someone like, I love the seats on Southwest. I like paying for Wi-Fi, actually. Psycho behavior by some of you right now. Psychos. Let's do this thing. Coming up on today's show, we're going to discuss the long-awaited conversation ever since the Russell Wilson news broke. Should the Falcons sign Russell Wilson? Then we're going to talk about a trade rumor that linked Legereus need to Atlanta. But selfishly, I do ask off the top here to subscribe to the channel. We're 100 subs away from 20K. Be a part of Falcons YouTube history. Hit the sub button down below. Now, let's talk about Russell Wilson because he was released by Denver earlier this week in a move we all saw coming, especially when Sean Payton somewhat slipped up at the NFL Combine and said, we got to get the next one right, inferring that the current one is already wrong. But the Broncos owe Russell Wilson $39 million in cash. That's an important number to hold on to, and I'll tell you why later, because that number could be subtracted if another team signs him to a contract, and that would thus well, create a potential where Russell Wilson takes a vet minimum to stick the Broncos with the highest tab possible. But first things first, I want to address this head on and go, show of hands, literally, right now, raise your hand if the number one reason you want to sign Russell Wilson is because he would sign for a cheap vet minimum contract because the Broncos already owe him $39 million, so why would he take a bigger deal elsewhere and take more money away from his new team? If that's your motivation for signing Russell Wilson, show your hands right now. And I don't think that's an awful idea. That's a very simplistic and favorable route. He's still a top 20 quarterback. 
get a top 20 quarterback for $1.5 million. That's great value. But my question for those of you that want to go down that path, if the goal is to get Russell Wilson to save money, what do you want to spend the money on? Because I'm not interested in signing Russ to a super cheap contract and the motivation to do so was to save money and then not go on a shopping spree in free agency. ESPN came out with their top 101 free agents, and this is just their rankings of them, but it's a good starting point. And when you look at some of these guys that are going to get the biggest contracts in free agency, not a lot of them are really on the Falcons' wish list. Chris Jones is going back to Kansas City. If you go get Russell Wilson, you're not getting Kirk Cousins. I don't see Christian Wilkins coming down. Daniil Hunter is definitely appetizing, but I don't think it's one or the other. I don't think Daniil Hunter would price you out of getting another quarterback. You're not getting Baker. You're not getting an offensive lineman. If you're getting an edge rusher like Daniil Hunter, I don't see you pursuing Chase Young or Leonard Williams along with it. Right? We can continue going down the list here. A lot of these positions are spots that Atlanta doesn't really need help at. I see a lot of offensive line here. Some good edge rushers, but I don't see the Falcons spending money on three edge. Like, you're just not going to sign three edge rushers at the same position because you can't, right? If you're going to save money on Russell Wilson, you'd want to spread it around your roster a little bit at different spots. And I just don't see two to three guys in the top 20 at different positions that Atlanta direly needs that they could save money on by getting Russell Wilson to afford these other players. Like, the Falcons have money to spend here even without getting a quarterback, whether it's Kirk Cousins or Justin Fields. It's not one or the other. And I think that really needs to get across. If you go get Kirk Cousins or you go get Justin Fields, you can still sign other players to go along with it. This is not a team that is getting by the skin of their teeth in cap space. This is a team with just one or two more very basic releases can have $57 million in cap space. You sign Kirk Cousins, for example, to a two-year $90 million contract, he's probably going to have a cap hit in year one of 30 to $35 million. You still have over 15 20 You can still go get a top-tier edge rusher. That's the point I want to make here. If you want to sign Russell Wilson because you want to do Arthur Blank a solid, he's a billionaire. Let him spend his money on this team. That's his job. Now, I also will toss this in there. Not saying it's a guarantee, but Andrew Brandt, who covers the NFL closely, did put this out in the universe, tweeting, yes, Russell Wilson, an agent, could take a minimum contract from a team since Broncos on the hook for the rest of $39 million and try to get big guarantees for 2025. But as you learn working in the NFL, what goes around comes around. Not sure a team would want to do the Broncos like that. So again, I go back to, if your motivation to sign Russell Wilson is the vet minimum, I understand that's really appealing. But it may not even be 100% vet minimum. I'm not saying Andrew Brandt's word is the word of God. But that is something to at least put into the equation. And once again, I don't think signing Kirk Cousins or trading for Justin Fields is like, well, let's pack it up. We'll see you guys at the draft. That's all the money we had to spend today, folks. No. I also just don't see Denver, I beg your pardon, Atlanta, signing Russell Wilson and then signing 10 more guys to go along with it. I feel like you're going to be a little bit disappointed of, we got Russell Wilson, we saved this money, but then who else did we get because we saved all that money? Oh, no one really. We just let Arthur Blank off the hook, and he didn't have to spend a lot of money on a quarterback. Hmm. Now, Russell Wilson this past season definitely improved from year one in Denver. Touchdowns up, interceptions down, quarterback rating up. Like Just going off the box score, he looked a lot better. I want to dive a little bit deeper. I want to look at some advanced stats with you guys for a second. In 2023, Russell Wilson's average depth of target, meaning when he threw the football, whether it was completed or not, how many yards down the line of scrimmage was his intended target? Was he going for deep shots? Was he going for guys sometimes even behind the line of scrimmage or right at the line of scrimmage. It was 7.1 yards. That ranked 25th out of 32 qualifying quarterbacks. Okay, His completed air yards, meaning 
did he dump it off to one yard guy and then that guy ran 50 yards? Or did he throw it 50 yards down the field and the receiver caught it in the end zone, right? How did the 50 yards get accumulated? He got 1,300 yards through the air. That's 24. Yards after catch, meaning the receiver's doing a lot of the heavy lifting, 1,700. That's 14. Russell Wilson last year was a check down quarterback. He still had some deep passes. He had a Hail Mary, uh, a meaningless one, ironically enough, in week two against the Commanders. Some nice deep balls to go along with it throughout the season as well. But by and large, throughout the course of the season, he was a short, intermediate quarterback. Not someone who pressed the football down the field. And I think as his age goes up, what are we doing here? We're just looking for a guy to be a slightly less turnover-prone Desmond Ritter. And hey, that's not a bad thing to get. Don't get me wrong. That's definitely an improvement from last year. But is that the bar? Just guys that were a little bit better than Desmond Ritter last year? Great. The Falcons no longer are a seven-win team. They are now nine and eight. And you have the right to lose in the first round of the playoffs. Sue me. I have bigger aspirations for this team. So don't settle for Russell Wilson because you want to do Arthur Blank a solid and get a really cheap quarterback when you can still get a good quarterback and still sign good players. So let me know. Do you want to sign Russell Wilson? Yes or no? Right off the bat, get in the comment section below and let me know. For me, my quarterback preference has pretty much stayed the same. Goal number one is to somehow find a way to get Drake May or Jane Daniels. That seems like a very lofty goal. I don't see a way that Falcons find someone to trade with, but it's the NFL draft. Crazy stuff happens every single year. Goal number two, or guy number two, I should say, is trade for Justin Fields. I like the age element and the contract element over Kirk Cousins, and I don't think the Falcons, with a very short window of Kirk Cousins' remaining years, are in a spot where they can just win a Super Bowl next year. They're not like the Bucs, for example. Now, of course, getting Tom Brady and Kirk Cousins are very different, but I think that Bucks roster was a lot closer to winning postseason games than the Falcons roster is right now. Number four, it's Russell Wilson because there's just no other better option out there. And then number five is I'm going to pick the Winnipeg, I think the, the, the Blue Bombers, I don't know. That will be my CFL team. I will resign from the NFL. Now, next up on the show, are the Atlanta Falcons interested in LeJarius Sneed, the star cornerback from Kansas City who helped them win a Super Bowl, is evidently a, available for a trade, and the Falcons were linked to Sneed. But first, if you want to join PD's Polo's club right now, Fanatics is having an awesome sale. I'm a big fan of this polo right here. It's got the retro Falcons logo on it, and it's 25% off. You're basically losing money. If you don't go to chatsports.com slash ATL Polo. Now, I don't know if legally I can say that. So if the FCC just heard that, just skip over that part. But for everyone else, get this awesome Falcons polo today by using our link. It's in the comments and description of today's video. Now let's talk about Legereus Sneed, the DB for the Kansas City Chiefs. The Falcons were among several interested teams, according to USA Today, for trading for Sneed. We'll look at their exact wordage in just a moment. But for those of you that don't know, the Chiefs franchise tagged Legereus Sneed, which means he's not going to be a free agent. You cannot sign Legereus Sneed. However, you could do a tag and trade where the Kansas City Chiefs trade him to another team, and then that team, 99 times out of 100, I would say 100 times out of 100, will then give Legereus Sneed a multi-year contract. Here's what Tyler Dragon, what an all-time name, from USA Today said. A person with direct knowledge of the situation told USA Today Sports that the Minnesota Vikings, Indianapolis Colts, Tennessee Titans, New England Patriots, Detroit Lions, Atlanta Falcons, and Jacksonville Jaguars have expressed interest in the Chiefs' corner. I'm just frankly shocked the list isn't longer. Like, Legereus Snee, the last two, three seasons, has been one of the best cornerbacks in football. And he was so physical and violent and just dominant for Kansas City during their postseason run, right? He was one of the best DBs in football last season. Look at the coverage stats. He's not just a ball hawk corner, which sometimes leads to you getting burned. Go talk to, like, Trayvon Diggs or Deron Bland about that. I mean, he didn't give up a single touchdown in coverage. Quarterback rating of 55.9 when targeted. Zero touchdowns, 406 yards. There are so many things to like and love about Legereus Need. 
But when I see this, I start thinking a couple steps ahead here. Is the plan not to extend A.J. Terrell? Because making a move for LeJerry Sneed is twofold. It's giving up currency, right? Draft capital to get him. And then giving up real currency, dollars, to extend him. Two big moves when you've already got a CB1. Unless you think you don't, right? Unless Raheem Morris thinks A.J. Terrell's not our CB1 over the future. He's not a guy that we want to invest in long term. And I can see maybe how he gets to that point. I mean, A.J. Terrell had a great start. And I still think the, the, the stats here don't do him truly justice because teams are avoiding him a lot more now than they did at the beginning of, this, of his career where he got a lot more interceptions and pass breakups. A.J. Terrell, make no mistake, is still one of the best cornerbacks in football. But maybe the Falcons feel like we like Snead more and we don't want to invest in Terrell long term. If you're curious what these contracts would run for, I put these up, I cooked these up earlier this morning and then we saw Jalen Johnson from the Bears kind of provide a little bit of a blueprint he got a four-year, $76 million contract. So Terrell is below that number. Legereus Need, I put at three years, 55. So both of these guys would be slightly below the all-pro corner from the Chicago Bears. And both of them would be ranking top 10, which is a very expensive investment for just one position room, right? Having two top 10 paid corners. The Dolphins did that with Xavier Howard and Jalen Ramsey. And they moved on from one of those two guys after just one season. But for those of you that are really curious what it would cost to get Snead in a trade, I go back and forth a little bit on the compensation because Kansas City is looking for a one. They're looking for a first. Atlanta's not going to give up a top 10 pick. If they were picking 24th overall, it would be a, a no-brainer. So what I can offer is Atlanta's second-round pick this year and their second-round pick next year. I toyed with the idea of actually giving Kansas City the Falcons' eighth overall pick, and in exchange, Legereus Sneed, and then Kansas City's first and second round pick this year to make up for falling from eight to 32. But I felt like that was just too much in favor of the Chiefs. So this is my trade offer. Let me know if you would do this trade. Keep in mind, this likely comes at a price of A.J. Terrell plays out the final year of his contract, and maybe he walks in free agency, and the Falcons decide not to go with him. So if you feel like Terrell is a cornerback worthy of being on the Falcons for seven, eight, nine years, this is likely one or the other. For two seconds, though, man, it'd be hard to pass on that offer, right? And then you kind of try and hope they figure out a way to get both cornerbacks paid. It seems like a long shot, but it can be done if, if the Falcons with Raheem Morris and Christian Lake, their DC, who's a DB guy, feel like, let's put a lot of our money into the cornerbacks and maybe skimp out other places. I mean, think about the DB room for Atlanta. Jesse Bates, A.J. Terrell, Legereus Sneed. That is a no-fly zone for 2024. All right, that will do it for us, though, on this edition of Falcons today. I really appreciate those of you that tuned in. If you're still watching and you like the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Do you want to sign Russell Wilson? What does... The majority say. The thing with draft picks is fans get attached to them way too much. Because draft picks, you know what they are, Jack? It's the game show where there's three doors. And behind one of those doors is a brand new car. And behind the other two doors is nothing. And people would take that over guaranteed things that may not be a brand new car because of the allure of the possibility of getting that brand new shiny toy. They're just lottery tickets. You hope they work out, but a lot of times they don't. It's the thrill of the gamble. It's yeah. the thrill of the gamble. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, it's, you look at Tom Brady, 199. Mm -hmm. Could we put, could we could we get the next goat? You know, like, it's it's the thrill of that. Yep, and if Legereus Need was in this year's draft, he wouldn't make it to pick 43. He'd probably go around picks 
13 to 20. Probably. Okay. Are we ready to talk mock draft roundup, though? I'm excited. Um, we're up to 86 likes. Some of you are still flying on Spirit slash Southwest. Join the Delta Club. For, for, if, yes, and hey, if you want to fly the uh, low-budget way and get up at 5 a.m., power to you. But there is nothing worse than when that trip rolls around and you agreed for a 5 a.m. wake-up call at the end of a bachelor party. I had friends when I went to a New Orleans bachelor party who did that. They just never went to bed. They, we, they literally brought their suitcase to Bourbon Street and then went from there to the airport at 3 a.m. It was a wild experience. And then one guy... Slept, f fell asleep in the airport and missed his flight. That's why. Delta, 10 a.m. flight. Go to, go to bed. Okay, we're at 92 likes. We'll take it, baby. Um, let's jump into a mock draft roundup. I looked over all the big publication mock drafts, see who they had the Falcons taking at number eight, and consolidated it and condensed it for you guys. Let's, uh, let's jump into it after my water drink. Okay. Let's talk mock draft. Coming up on today's show, I took a peek at some of the mock drafts that came out after the NFL Combine from all the big outlets, and I wanted to see who they had the Falcons taking at pick number eight. So we're going to condense it all on today's show and go mock draft by mock draft, pick by pick. So let's get started right now with ESPN's Jordan Reed's mock draft. We're at number eight. He had the Falcons taking Dallas Turner, the edge rusher out of Alabama. If you are just starting to ramp up your mock draft coverage, let me get you up to speed on Dallas Turner. He measured in, at Indianapolis 6'3", 247 pounds. He finished first in both the 40-yard dash and the 10-yard split for defensive ends in the draft. The pro I've got for Dallas Turner, and go, to go back to the measurements, when you're looking at measurements for different position groups, 10-yard split, much more important than 40-yard dash, in my opinion. Now, the pro I've got for Dallas Turner, he wins on his quickness and closing speed. He is going to beat the left or right tackle when the ball is snapped. He's just got that great first step, and that showed at the combine. He's also not going to be an edge rusher that the quarterback gets away from. If you are in his grasp, you're going down. Now, the con is he's not the biggest edge rusher, which means he can struggle with setting the edge, meaning if he's got a tight end and a left tackle barreling down towards him, he may get pushed around a little bit and not contain the play inside of him. But there's no question that he was a very productive and athletically gifted player last year for the Crimson Tide. Usually in the draft, you see some sort of favoring of one or the other, were they productive, but they didn't have great athletic, athletic traits? Or are they an athletic freak, but it didn't really ever pan out to sacks or touchdowns? Oh, Dallas Turner is both. He's the complete package in that regard. And I'll be honest, he is growing on me by the day. Now, here's what Jordan Reed wrote on Dallas Turner. Atlanta has leaned heavily on offense in the first round over the past few years. But I think GM Terry Fontenot will go defense this time around. With the way this board fell... He can get the best prospect in the class on that side of the ball. Turner is a long and explosive pass rusher who has continued to improve every season. Atlanta was last in pass rush win rate last season, 30.9%, but Turner can help. He posted 10 sacks and got pressure 16.7% of the time in 2023, both top 10 in the FBS. So I'm thinking about what the Falcons are going to do, not what I would do. Think of the lens in the eyes of Raheem Morris. You just hired a defensive-minded coach. What do you think he wants to do? The last head coach went offense. Round one pick after round one pick after round one pick. I think we're going to see it go to the other side of the football, and we're going to try and see Atlanta address the long issue they've had at finding a pass rusher. Especially when you look at their front five right now, like Calais Campbell, Bud Dupree, two impending free agents, Grady Jarrett, is the next best pass rusher of the bunch. He's coming off a torn ACL. He may not be ready to roll as soon as week one comes about, or maybe not at least 100% by them. But, uh, you know, really take it a step further. Like, these guys, Dupree and Calais Campbell, they were the leading sack getters for this team in 2023. 
and they are both free agents. So you've got to find a way to replace these players that were very important that are no longer on this team. And I mean, maybe they find a way to bring Campbell back, but I don't see a way they find to bring Bud Dupree back. So if you need to re-up your pass rushing, which they do, round one, number eight overall, is a good time to do that. Now grade the selection of Dallas Turner. If this was the pick that was handed into the commissioner, how would you feel about it? A, B, C, D, or F? For me, I would give it a B plus grade. I don't know if Dallas Turner is one of the best edge rushers we have seen enter the draft the last couple of years, and ultimately he's going to be the first to go because it's just such an important position. But I do have my concerns about the run-stopping abilities for being a top-10 pick and if he can always win on speed at the next level. All right, moving on to the second mock draft roundup. I'm going to go, or I'm not going with this. The athletic, excuse me, is going with Jaden Daniels, the quarterback out of LSU. Now, this involved a trade up for the Falcons, where Dane Brugler had Atlanta trading with the Patriots, giving up their eighth overall pick, their 43rd overall pick, and a future first, which honestly, it seems light. Most years, maybe that's what it costs, but when it's a quarterback heavy class, Teams are going to tack a premium on. They're going to put a bit of a, a tax on it. And I think it might cost you a little bit more. But for now, this is the trade package. Here's what Dane Brugler wrote. Owner Arthur Blank once signed off on a trade that surrendered a massive haul of draft picks to jump up for a wide receiver, Julio Jones. He won't hesitate to do it again if it means landing the upgrade at quarterback. His franchise has been coveting. Is Daniels that guy? It's a strong possibility. My first question is not about Jaden Daniels at all. It is, can you find a trade partner? I know I'm a broken record at this point, but it's really important that this gets through people's heads of, sure, it's fun moving up in the draft and mock draft, but it takes two to trade. So can you find someone to trade with? Now, Dane Brugler was very kind enough to join our chat sports crew at the NFL Combine last week. And I want to share what he said about the top five in general. Let's roll it. I think everybody wants to know how these quarterbacks are going to shake out, right? Um, it feels like we're going to see some action in the top five. And it's just a matter of what, how is that going to play out? Is it, you know, I think we see quarterbacks go one, two, three, and then, but who's picking third? Is it the Patriots? Do we see, is that where we see a shakeup? Maybe uh, a team like the Falcons, the Vikings, the Broncos, the Raiders, moving up to three to go get that third quarterback. Um, obviously, Justin Fields is kind of like the first domino in this whole quarterback conversation. And then if you're the commanders, you make, you, you make the Bears say no, right? You say, hey, we'll give you a one next year and maybe a player. It's Let's go up to one. Let's let's. I, I, we know you like a couple of these guys the same, right? Let's go up to one. And you make the Bears say, no, absolutely not. So. Now, in contrast to what Dane Brugler said, Dan Graziano from ESPN following the Combine wrote, there's a lot of speculation about what the Patriots would do with the number three pick. Some thought early in the week that a trade down was possible. But by the end of the week, the sense seemed to be that the Pats would stay put and take one of the top three quarterbacks. And I maintain the position I've had pretty much since the NFL draft order was set. The Bears, the Commanders, and the Patriots all want to take quarterbacks. And none of them are moving. So you can come up with whatever great trade ideas you want. They're not taking it. They're not passing up on a generational type talent. Well, somebody's got a generational. Caleb Williams is. Not so much Drake Mayer, Jane Daniels, but they're very, very good too. But the point is, these are teams that do not want to be picking at the top next year. And a great way to get out of that is by getting a quarterback. Now, as for just Jaden Daniels as a player in general, yeah, the dude's awesome. Like, he won the Heisman last year. I do have some concerns about his ability to throw over the middle of the field. He's got a slightly smaller-ish frame, which may lead to him getting banged up a little bit on the easier side. But we're kind of nitpicking at this point. I think Jaden Daniels is going to make a great NFL quarterback. Moving on to the third mock draft, NFL.com's Chad Reuter. He had the Falcons going Jared Verse, edge rusher. So similar to ESPN, but a different player. So let's get to know the Florida State edge rusher. 
Six foot four, 254 pounds, so a little bit bigger than Dallas Turner, but that size comes with some cons. Uh, finished fourth in the 40 yard dash and sixth in the 10 yard split, whereas T Turner finished first in both of those. Now, the pro I've got for Jared Verse is he wins with speed and power. Like, he's able to get himself off the line of scrimmage quickly, and he's not afraid to get the hand out and beat the offensive tackle to the point of attack. He's also got great awareness. He just seems to always find himself in a position to make a play. I think at the combine, you can get some really cool data points and whatnot, but you know what you're not going to get? Guys that just have a knack for always being around the football. Guys that can read an offensive play when the ball is snapped and know where the play is headed and where to be. And that's where Jared Verse thrives at. It's an awesome story. Started off at Albany with the Great Danes. Then he goes down to the Seminoles, puts together back-to-back -to -back nine sack seasons. He's got a great motor, great effort. The con I've got for him is he's an average run stopper. I don't think he is someone that's going to come in there and really set the edge for you and be a dual threat type of edge rusher or get after the quarterback and also find himself in the backfield taking down running backs. There were times where he missed some easier tackles that I'm sure he'd like to have back. But my takeaway from this is we go in Jared Verse over Dallas Turner. That's what NFL.com had the Falcons doing, being the first team to take an edge rusher and going Florida State over Alabama. I disagree on that front. I would prioritize Dallas Turner over Jared Verse. Now, before we get on to the final mock draft, make sure you are subscribed to the channel. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers as we film this during our live show. Quick self-plug, Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. So help us reach that big milestone today. If you have not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. And our final mock draft comes from the Atlanta Falcons themselves, like the actual tweet. Who's your source? Literally us, the Falcons. Uh, Tori McElhaney, who is the team reporter she did a mock draft, and she had the Falcons going Drake May quarterback. And similar to the Athletic, this involved a trade-up with the New England Patriots. It was actually the exact same trade. It's just Drake May was available instead of Jaden Daniels. So let's talk about the UNC quarterback. Six foot four, 223 pounds. Like a lot of other quarterbacks, he pretty much skipped a lot of the stuff at the Combine. So we just got to go off the film, and that's probably the best way to go about it anyway. The pro I've got for Drake May is great arm talent. If you're looking for a quarterback that can make all sorts of difficult throws, he can do that. He's got accuracy. He's got playmaking abilities due to his very high upside and his overall athleticism. The con is sometimes he tries to go for the home run and it burns him. He had 16 interceptions during his two years at UNC, and there's just a little bit of coaching that needs to be done to – Take what the defense gives you from time to time. But two-year starter, extremely productive, great size, great frame, great velocity, great accuracy on his passes. He really does check a lot of the boxes that you are looking for in a quarterback. There may be some sandpaper involved in getting him NFL ready, but I think he's going to morph into a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback. Now, here is what we got from the NFL Combine and Drake May talking about the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, with the Falcons, shoot, Atlanta, I, I was really impressed. You know, obviously T.J. Yates, you know, North Carolina guy's quarterback coach. Um, so that, that was my first interview of the, of the combine here, so it made it easy, you know, being with the North Carolina guy. And, uh, you know, Coach Morris is, uh, you know, congratulating him. He was you know, a new head coach, so I thought Atlanta, with Atlanta went well. All in all, I would love to be in a world where the Atlanta Falcons land Drake May. I don't know if that world exists. For the same reasons I gave for Jaden Daniels. Can you even move up? I won't uh, beat this horse to death once again, but if you can find a trade partner, then the Falcons will, with, will without a doubt be a team interested in moving up. Chances of that seem a bit slim right now. But if you had to pick a quarterback between the two that Atlanta drafted in these two in these uh, mock drafts, who would you rather have, Drake May or Jaden Daniels? I go Drake May. I feel like Drake May is a much safer bet, and Jaden Daniels, well, he had a great run at, at LSU going all the way to the Heisman. I feel like Drake May, his skill set will transfer to the NFL better than Jaden Daniels. 
All right, that's going to do it for us on this edition of Falcons Today. Hope you guys are having a good rest of your day. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you all later. Super Chat rolling in from Chris Hagmayer. What's going on, Chris? What is more likely? Number one, Arthur Blank's age emphasizing a more win-now strategy. Two, decline in... Um, Seat license, premier seat license ticket prices, excuse me, warranting acquisition blockbuster talent, example, Bijan, to bring excitement for fans. Okay. Um, more likely, I would say the number one. If Art was really worried about the, like, the income level, and that's why they went with the guy that sells jersey picks and gets butts in seats, right? Like Bijan, maybe. Um, I think he would just raise concession prices too. Wouldn't that kind of feel like the next step in, man, I got to get some, some money rolling in here. Let's go get a guy that's going to sell a lot of jerseys. All right. You could also raise hot dog prices, which I love that Arthur Blank doesn't do that. So I think it's number one most likely. He's 81 years old. I mean, I don't want, I don't, I don't, I, I don't want to put this out in the universe, but like, he did miss Raheem Morris' introductory press conference due to a minor medical incident. Don't know what it was. Very happy he is okay, and he spoke to the media later. But, I mean, you can kind of connect the dots yourself. All right, we do have a mailbag coming up next on the show. Use hashtag Falcons or Super Chat if you would like to guarantee a spot on screen. Super Chat, and we guarantee, like Chris just saw, that everyone watching can see. Hashtag Falcons, producer Jack, he picks his favorite question. Let's remind everyone, Jack, before we get this mailbag underway, that we're doing a Super Chat deal for today, which is any Super Chat, no matter the amount, does not matter, will get you entered into a Michael Vick autographed helmet giveaway, which we are going to do at the end of the show, uh, end of the month, end of the month, end of the month. I got ahead of myself. So if you want to potentially walk away with an autographed Mike Vick mini helmet, one you could put on your desk, at school, at work, wherever, then hashtag or... Gosh, any super chat. I really botched that. Hopefully, the writing on screen can make more sense than I just did for the last 10 seconds. You know, I couldn't speak English the other day when I was asking people to subscribe. I bet I lost subscribers. I, I was like some Eastern European guy trying to sell you insurance. Like, no one's going to believe that I'm actually who I say I am. Daniel Brown taking advantage of it, though, with a $2 super chat. Let's go. Is that a Panthers cup? It's not. Uh, full transparency, it's a Giants cup. I'm not a Giants fan. The reason why I use this cup, though, is I'm a part of the problem. Here at Chat Sports, we don't have necessarily the cleanest people. And so the cups here in the cupboard haven't really been washed. Or they, at least they weren't washed for a long time. So Marshall Green, who hosts our Giants channel, one of his viewers sent in a whole Giants care package that he got because he's a season ticket holder. And I took the Giants cup because it was the cleanest one, and the other cups were getting like a weird yellow color at the bottom. So That's why I roll with this very nice new clean Giants cup so I don't uh, get some sort of disease. That's why I always bring my own personal water bottle to the yeah. office. Like, we've had the same cups in the cupboard since I started in July 2021. And it wasn't until about a month ago when I just said, you know what? I'm taking all the dishware home and I'm running it through my personal dishwasher because we don't have one here at the office. Because, and I was a part of this problem, people were just putting it under the water sink and just calling it a day. So I was like, enough of that. I'm just going to go get a nice new clean cup. So I, I'm a Giants fan, I think, when I drink water. It also, New York blue, like that kind of fits pretty nicely. Um, okay. Are we ready? Oh, and bring your own cups. For a little while there, I was kind of rocking a big, big stack of red solo cups, but I don't like being so wasteful and just going through one like every trip or something. So instead, I just I use this Giants cup. And it's, it's delicious water. Well, there's nothing bad than bad water. Bad water, and you know it when you have it. You're like, I don't want to drink this. All right, are we ready to jump into a mailbag? All right, let's answer the questions you guys have for me on today's show. And Daniel Brown, thank you for your super chat. 
What's going on, Falcons fans? Mailbag time here on the channel. I took questions during our live show, which aired Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern. So we'll run through some of the questions we got, starting with Established TV with a $5 Super Chat. I say Russ over Kirk any day, but still draft Penix, but Justin should be first, op finer, first option, I think is what Established meant to say. So the pecking order it seems like Established has is Justin Fields, Russell Wilson, Kirk Cousins, and also on the side pot, draft Michael Penix. No matter what Atlanta does between Russell Wilson, Kirk Cousins, and Justin Fields, I am very content with drafting a quarterback in round number two because Kirk Cousins is not your long, long-term answer. Justin Fields is a gamble, right? I don't think anyone can say with absolute certainty he's going to be this team's starting quarterback for the next 10 years. And Russell Wilson is going to be a one-year contract. So I'm on board with drafting Michael Penix in round two, and I really like Michael Penix coming out of Washington as well. As for Russ over Kirk, I disagree. Kirk Cousins is much better than Russell Wilson right now, and I'd rather just spend the money and get it right than half-ass it and get a really small TV. Go get the big flat screen. Channel 404, say that and tell me that the perfect offseason wouldn't be trading up for May and getting Daniil Hunter. Really like the idea of signing Daniil Hunter. As for trading up for Drake May, I'm on board, but are the Patriots? I don't think so. I think they're staying put. And I think the sooner people come to terms with that, the sooner we can start having more honest conversations about what to do at quarterback. Ty, Roma Dunze or Malik Neighbor? I think they're both going to be phenomenal wide receivers in the National Football League. I know every single draft, we prop all the prospects up to be can't-miss guys, and we fall in love with them all, and then, well, fast forward two years, and half of them are even starting, or a third are out of the league by now. But I think they're both going to be can't-miss guys. If I lean one or the other, I do lean towards Roma Dunze because he is just such a physical, big-body guy that had such great in-route adjustments to balls being thrown that I think he's going to be the next DeAndre Hopkins, but maybe even a little bit faster. Cody Massey, will Patriots trade their pick? I don't think they will. If I'm looking at this through the lens of what would New England do. You've got Gerard Mayo, first-time head coach. He is inheriting a team that finished with the third pick last year. He will never want to pick top three again. And a good way to get out of that is by getting a good quarterback. Next year's quarterback class is not as good as this year's quarter, as this year's quarterback class. So if you don't want to pick top three again, go get a quarterback. Because if you do pass in the quarterback this year and you do go the safer Marvin Harrison route, you may still be picking top ten next year, and there may not be a good quarterback to pick at that point. Robert ATL, do you think the Falcons will sign Chase Young? Let's talk free agency for a moment, shall we? Do I think they'll sign Chase Young? I think Chase Young is going to sign a one-year prove-it-esque contract, and I don't think it's going to be Atlanta. Um, I know the Falcons were very interested and very close, some even say, to trading for Montez Sweat, so they clearly had a bit of a preference between the two former Washington Commanders edge rushers, and they lost out and missed out on Sweat. I don't think they're going to settle for Chase Young. My instinct is, He'll re-sign with the 49ers on a one-year prove-it type contract. But let me know, would you sign the former second overall pick in NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year? Yes or no? Get in the comment section below and give me your thoughts. Anthony Davis, Justin Fields for a second-round pick or J.J. McCarthy in the second round? Great question. I go Justin Fields. I just am that, and this is going to... You know, makes some people's ears bleed because I've talked about Fields so much on this channel. But I'm a big Fields believer. There's no denying that. There's no questioning that. There's no hiding that. So I'll go with Justin Fields. Chris, next one up. What is more likely? Arthur Blank agrees. Uh, Arthur Blank age emphasizing a more win now strategy or decline in seat license ticket prices warranting acquisition blockbuster talent? Example, Bijan to bring excitement for fans. I think number one, I don't really want to get too in the weeds on Arthur Blank's health because I don't know it like the back of my hand, but I do know he did miss Raheem Morris's introductory press conference because of a medical incident. So it does kind of beg the question of 
if it is really win now window, which I think for Arthur Blank's health standpoint, like if he really wants to see something very, very soon, then that's probably the more likely outcome, number one. Adam Lackman, if Falcons miss out on Fields, Kirk, and Russell, would you draft or trade? Would you trade up for a QB? If so, how many draft picks would you give up? Okay, let's say um, Justin Fields gets traded. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Denver Broncos. Uh, Kirk Cousins resigns in Minnesota, and Russell Wilson goes to Pittsburgh. Can you find someone to trade with? I'm not very optimistic that you can. But if you can, let's say the Patriots decide Marvin Harrison is our guy and the number four pick from the Arizona Cardinals is available. If you're going from eight to three or eight to four to get a quarterback and the other team knows you're getting a quarterback, we're talking first-round pick swap this year, second-round pick this year, next year's first, and probably next year's third. I think you can hold on to your second-round pick for next year. I, it's expensive. That's dramatic overpay based on the trade value chart. But when you're moving up for a quarterback, there's going to be a hefty tax that gets placed on that pick. Latrell McGuire, the Super Chat. Latrell, thank you so much for supporting the channel. Really appreciate you. Um, before we get to the rest of the questions, though, really quickly, there's a great deal going on at Fanatics. You can get this Falcons polo and join Petey's polo group, crew by going to chatsports.com slash ATL polo. Get 25% off. So if you're looking to up your Falcons wardrobe a little bit, use that link to get the sale. I put it in the comments and description of today's video. Daniel Brown, the Falcons should draft neighbors and get fields. Listen. Raheem Morris likely wants to go defense in round one because he's a defensive guy. He wants to improve that side of the football. But man, I love Roma Dunze and Malik neighbors way more than any defensive player in this draft. I feel like those two guys are surefire things. And it's the kind of pick that you'll look back at and go, why did the Falcons pass on Roma Dunze and Malik neighbors? I know it might not be the biggest need. But in a couple of years, you'll thank me. Go get one of those two wide receivers. Atlanta Dog 88. Do you think Justin Fields' stock is dropping at all since Russ is on the market now? Russ was always going to be on the market. So it's not a blind side or it's not an unexpected addition to the QB market that would lower Russ, uh, lower Fields' price. I do feel like the Bears may have made a little bit of a mistake by holding on to Fields for a little bit long because as time passed, or as time passes, I should say, people are going to start coming up with excuses to like or dislike a player. And right now, people are doing the dislike for Justin Fields. So I don't think Russ joining the market impacted Fields' price, but I do think there is a chance that maybe you don't have to give up your second-round pick to get him anymore, which... It's just crazy because Sam Darnold went for a second. Is anyone going to tell me that Sam Darnold, after those years in New York, was better than Justin Fields after three years in Chicago? No way. Taylor Elwell, we want any of the bills that were recently cut. Great question. They released uh, Tredavious White, Jordan Poyer, so some very notable DBs right there. Tredavious White would be very intriguing. Similar to Jeff Okuda, it's a guy that Similar-ish because of the injury history, but Tredavious White was much more proven before he got injured the last few seasons. I'd play ball for Tredavious White. One year, $8 million contract. If it works out, you got a guy that was one of the best cornerbacks in football just three to four years ago, and he's not even 30 years old yet, right? So if it doesn't, okay, you're out $8 million and you probably turn to a rookie midway through the year, which is basically what you did last year, so... I would be interested in Tredavious White. I think you're good with Richie Grant and definitely, definitely Jesse Bates at safety, though. Jason Greenway, lots of safeties out there. You think, wow, you think it's time to replace Grant? I don't. I, I don't. I, I think safety, the position we, have, we should have learned over the last few days, is not valued very highly. If all these teams, like the Broncos with Justin Simmons and Jordan Poyer, are moving on, and the Seahawks, Quandre Diggs, Jamal Adams, all these teams are moving on from Pro Bowl caliber players at the safety position. 
that tells you that teams don't want to spend big at that spot right now. So if Atlanta's got a cheap starting safety in Richie Grant, why go spend a lot of money for a safety that the league is just diminishing their value? Now, before we get to the rest of the questions, reminder, join us for our live shows here on the channel. They run at Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. If you have a question you want to ask, that is your opportunity to do so. Live Q&A every single Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern. Fantasy football friends, do you agree with this for our fit? Jaden Daniels over Justin Fields over Kirk Cousins over Russell Wilson. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, I think you do have to mention, like, how do you acquire Jaden Daniels? Are you trading up for him? And so is Jaden Daniels so much better than Justin Fields? He's worth two firsts and two seconds. That might be a different conversation. But surface level, I would agree. Owen Loveridge, what do you think of this trade for Fields? Sign Hunter and Tredavious White. Then draft Roma Dunze at eight. Where do I sign? What any pink, any any color ink? I'm in. Like, trade for Justin Fields, improve your pass rush with Daniel Hunter, improve your secondary with Tredavious White, if he can stay healthy, and then draft Roma Dunze at eight. Like, I'm in before I even read anything else after Roma, uh, before Roma Dunze. Like, Roma Dunze at eight, I think, is just such an awesome pick. Josiah Ortiz. Austin Hooper reunion. He's a free agent, and we do need a tight end, too. Two-time Pro Bowl with the Falcons. People forget. Um, maybe? Why not? Sure, I guess. Like, yeah, you do. You got to add another tight end. Um, I, I'm not going to go to war over who the tight end, two should be. Like, that won't be a battle I pick. So, Josiah, let's go get him. Diego. What do you think of pulling a Green Bay and developing a young QB from the second or late or late first behind Kirk? I like that strategy a lot. Whether it's Justin Fields or Kirk Cousins or Russell Wilson, you have my full blessing to go get what I would hope to be Michael Penix in round two. Let him sit for a year. If Fields is awesome, well, then you have a Kyle Trask situation on your hand where boo-hoo, we wasted a second rounder. If Fields doesn't work out, you've already got a head start on your replacement search, okay? Same goes if Kirk Cousins, if he's great for a year or two, Penix takes over in year three, you get two years of his rookie contract still, I'm on board, definitely. That's going to do it for us on our mailbag today, though. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you have not subscribed, you know the dealio. Go ahead, hit the sub button down below. What do we think about signing Chase Young? What do we think? We in, we out. Deal or no deal? I say no deal. No deal. Just the effort really scares me with Chase Young. How does a guy go from being second overall pick to NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year to he gets injured and his team doesn't pick up his fifth-year option. Maybe that was a wake-up call for him, like a maturity standpoint. But there should be some flags and some like alarm bells going off of, is this a guy to spend a lot of money on? Because there was a team that could have spent an okay amount of money on him, and we're very content to let him leave after his four-year contract was up. That should be a, a red flag. That should be something you go do homework on. That's when you go get the guy from draft day, who figured out no one went to Bo Callahan's birthday party. By the way, one thing about draft day, because I can't wait to rewatch it, and I think the draft is like 50 days away, like 49, I think. Um, why did the guy that knew all that information about Bo Callahan not say anything until five hours before the draft? Don't you think that had been really good information to mention in the weeks leading up to the draft? That guy, I don't know if you should... Like, promote him or fire him for coming in hot with that take on draft day. Now, that one always bugs me. Okay. I also bet the Browns that next season, they went like 7-10. and 10. I guess they would have gone 7-9 and nine back then. Use a top 10 pick on an off-ball linebacker and a running back. What a way to build a team. Sonny. Okay. Um... Let's throw up the Super Chat deal one last time, Jack, before we bid you guys farewell. So I'm going to try and say this in perfect English. Any Super Chat, 
no matter the amount, will get you entered into an autographed Michael Vick mini helmet giveaway, which we are doing at the end of the month. But this deal is only for today's show, meaning next week it'll be $10. So if you are like on the fence about it, send in any super chat amount today only, and you'll be entered. And we'll do that drawing at the end of the month. However, for the remaining Thursdays of this month, it is $10 to enter. So this is the best deal you're going to get. Okay. Vontae Mac. Vontae Mac, no matter what. I didn't. Re- do you guys ever have moments where you don't realize a certain actor is in a movie? Like, I didn't realize that was that person because they were kind of younger when they did that. Didn't realize that was Chadwick Boseman. Um, also didn't realize Jane Lynch is the mom in Talladega Nights. Just never, like, clicked for me. I don't know why. I'm like, that is Jane Lynch. It's just not a usual role that Jane, like, this, the trippiest one is Jason Bateman is in Dodgeball as the commentator. Jason Bateman is Jason Bateman in every single movie he does, except for Dodgeball. We got $10 Super Chat rolling in. R.I.P. indeed. R.I.P. indeed. Um, Feisty? Feisty? Falcons fan. Thanks for all you do. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the Super Chat. You know, I love my job. I get to come into work and talk about the NFL every single day. Never had a bad day working here. I love it. I love it. I love it. And I love it because there's a great community out there watching alongside with me. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know I'm kind of getting in my feels right now, but you really have no idea how much I appreciate all the warm, all the warm, you know, wishes and super chats we get here. Someone said dream job. You know, we are hiring at Chat Sports. So put that out there. Check out my Twitter at Matthew PD. And you can find the link to apply. If you want to join the crew, I will say it's work hard, play hard. But it's definitely a lot more work hard than people think. I think. Like there are people that come in, they're like, I can't wait to join. And then they're like, whoa, didn't realize it wasn't just like a fun factory 24-7. Like everything you saw on screen today took more than two minutes to do. So uh, it's a lot of fun, though. I, I, do love my, I do love my job. Ty, man, you got to apply, dude. I, I don't know if Time Man, I, I, don't, I don't know how old Time Man is. I don't know if Time Man is a working age, but Time Man, you would be a great addition. Owen says, don't think you'd hire a 15 year old. No, we wouldn't. Um, not a sweatshop, but when you're older, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well. That's going to do it for us, unless we get another super chat in the next 60 or so seconds, uh, and we'll, we'll keep the show going if that's the case. But otherwise, we do got to sign off. I know Jack Lauderay was kind enough to volunteer some of his time today because other people took some days off, and we were a little bit shorthanded, and Jack stepped up, and we got Falcons today live off the ground. But I do want him to get back to his originally scheduled programming. Um, so we will get on out of here. Channel 404. How else can you find the job? I mean, it's on like LinkedIn, I think it is. It's not on LinkedIn. If you like search, if you search chat sports job, it's not hiding. Like the whole point of it is for people to find the posting. So it's out there somewhere. Uh, Chris, what's going on? The Falcons realized Jaguars would avoid extending Ridley and signing in free agency. Kind of feels like we got we got screwed on a loophole. Chris, this is a great question, and I'm glad you brought it up so I can kind of bring it, address it. There are a lot of people out there going, why would the Jags re-sign Calvin Ridley before March 11th when they can sign him on March 12th and not give up a second-round pick? And that's a very fair point to make. I will say, if you're the Jags and you do want to bring back Calvin Ridley, it's not worth, in my eyes, letting him test the free agent market, him getting a bigger offer elsewhere, and now you're doing one of two things. You are raising your original offer to match the one that uh, the Cleveland Browns made, for example, or B, you're going to lose Calvin Ridley outright because you can't go that high because you didn't want to risk or you didn't want to give up a second-round pick. Like, if you know that you want to bring him back, that's not something to play around with. You've got a young quarterback in Trevor Lawrence. You collapsed at the end of the last season. 
if you really do believe Calvin Ridley is a core piece of your team, you're already giving up a third. It's not like you're not giving up any draft capital. It's best to just get it done rather than fly too close to the sun and potentially lose Calvin Ridley. But at least we still have our second. Well, now you lost your third. So there are some pros and cons to it. Um, I hope that answered your question, though. I just looked it up. If you go on Google yeah. and search chat sports jobs, uh-huh. you will see a the first thing to pop up is the chat sports website, and you can find it there. Okay, perfect. Like, If Jacksonville doesn't love Calvin Ridley and they are okay with being in a world where he's not on their team, then, yeah, you don't have to sign him. But if they are like, ooh, let's wait till March 12th and then sign him. Uh, what happens when Calvin Ridley walks into that meeting and goes, so you guys offered me, um, let's just say, $70 million. The Browns offered me 80 I assume you'll be going up to 80 as well. Actually make it 81 And now Jacksonville goes, whoa, we just cost ourselves $11 million by waiting an extra day, and we don't have that $11 million to spend, and now we're about to lose him outright because we wanted to be sneaky gamble. Maybe it works out, right? Maybe Calvin Ridley goes, hey, I didn't get a bigger offer elsewhere, so I'll stay in Jacksonville. And the Jags get Ridley, and they keep their second. But maybe not. All right. Uh, where is the headquarters located? Great question. Dallas, Texas. Everyone in Chat Sports lives and works in Dallas, Texas. We do all of our filming here in studios in Dallas, so this is HQ, baby. Oh, and Cincinnati. That was stupid of me. One of the jobs is in Cincinnati. We do have a, we do have a secondary location, Cincinnati. It's a two-man crew. So they're looking to make it a three-man crew, a threesome, menage a trois. All right, let's get on out of here. We will see you all later. Have a good rest of your day.